water. It's so important that the CDC recommends that each of us store at least a gallon of water for three days as a minimum of a backup supply of water on hand. Now, if you have very many people in your home or if you have pets that you need to save for also, including livestock, that adds up to be a lot of water really quickly and that's just the minimum. So how in the world are you gonna store all of that water in your home? Well, today I have a special trick for you that is going to make storing water so incredibly easy. You're gonna be able to store it in so much less space than you think. Let's go check it out. About three years ago, I received my first freeze dryer. Now, when I first got it, I was pretty skeptical about its uses and whether or not it would actually be practical in my home. But since then, I have come to absolutely love my freeze dryer. You guys know I have done videos on how to freeze dry chicken pot pie filling, how to freeze dry milk and eggs, how to freeze dry fruit, all sorts of amazing things. But today, I'm gonna to be showing you something that is absolutely mind-blowing and something that you can only do with a freeze dryer at home. And that is to freeze dry your water to reduce its size and its weight when you go to store this. This is absolutely amazing because it really, really reduces everything down. It's gonna be so much lighter. You're gonna be able to take it out on backpacking trips, on camping trips, wherever you need to take water, you're gonna be able to take this with you. You're also going to be reducing the storage size of your water. So no more big one gallon jugs stacked in the corner of a basement or under a bed somewhere to make sure you have your backup water. Now you're gonna be able to get your entire backup supply of water in just a quart size jar. And that's for your entire family for a few days. It is so amazing. Let's get right to it. Now, of course, when we start with our water, we want to start with really clean, pure water. It's important to not have a lot of chemicals in it, make sure it's really clean, no bacteria, because of course, freeze drying does not kill bacteria. So if you start with bacteria in your water, you're gonna end with bacteria in your water. And of course, that is absolutely what we don't want. So start with really good, clean, filtered water and make sure that if you have access to some water with some decent minerals in it, like slightly hard, a little bit of hard water, of course, that's super good for your health, getting those minerals into your body. So don't use softened water if possible. Really, you don't wanna use distilled water, but you do wanna use, again, really, really clean, fresh water to start with. When we're freeze drying some liquids, there are a few challenges, and that is actually getting the liquid in the tray and then getting the tray to the machine. Generally, when it comes to freeze drying, I recommend pre-freezing your food and your trays of food, but when it comes to liquid, that just gets so hard because it requires a lot of movement in and out of the freezer. So the best case scenario is to go ahead and put your tray right on into the machine and then pour your water in. So let's head on over to the machine and do that. All right, now I have a large size freeze dryer um, from Harvest Right, a Harvest Right freeze dryer. I absolutely love this thing. But that means that I can fit about four cups of liquid on this large size tray. So here I have my really good quality water and I'm gonna pour it right on into the tray very carefully. Go. that's right about four cups push it in and the next tray if I have to do four cups at a time that does mean that it is going to take about four of these trays to get me a day's worth for one person so this is going to take a few days of a project to get this built up but you're going to be so glad you did it whenever we're working with liquid in a freeze dryer that is not frozen we want to do one extra step and that is to hit the customize button and go ahead and customize your settings and that is is that you want to increase your freeze time turn up this in extra freeze time and you want it to be at about two and a half hours. I'm actually going to go up to about three hours here. 
If your water's not completely frozen when that pump kicks on, it's going to make this drawing motion and it's going to create a mess in your machine that kind of poofs everywhere. So you wanna make sure that the water is completely frozen before that pump kicks on. So that's why you wanna do that extra freeze time. Now this is important with any liquid that you do. It's really important as you get things that have um, higher protein or higher sugar in it. So water's certainly not the worst, and let's be real, water's pretty easy to clean up, right? It's not gonna make a mess, but it's still a great extra standard step to take when you're freeze drying liquids. Go ahead and push save, and then start your machine. Now your freeze dryer is set up to kind of run the program all by itself after that. So once you get it started following your on-screen prompts, you shouldn't have any problem just letting your machine work and it's gonna let you know when it's totally done. Now, just by movie magic, I have one already done for you guys. Look at that. Do you guys see what's left? This was four cups of water and look at how little is in here. There's a little bit of this poofy bit, which is mostly the leftover minerals. Um, so let's go talk about how to store this and then we're going to talk about how to rehydrate it. When you're storing freeze-dried foods, it's important to make sure that you keep them away from their number one enemies. That's going to be light, oxygen and moisture of any kind. So we wanna be able to lock these down into something airtight. Today, I'm gonna to be using a jar. I'm going to keep adding to this jar as I do more and more water and getting our supply. And then I'm gonna be using an oxygen absorber. Now this is really important to make sure it's not getting any extra oxygen in it. Since I'm gonna be adding to this over and over again, I wanna go ahead and put that oxygen absorber right down at the very bottom of this jar. I'm also gonna be sealing this jar with a vacuum sealer. So I have my vacuum sealer lid here and let's see. I have my actual vacuum sealer right here. Now this is a great little handheld vacuum sealer from Food Saver. It just has an attachment that goes right into here and pulls all of the air out of something. So this is gonna keep the moisture away from it. It's also gonna keep the oxygen away from it. And then we're just gonna keep it in our darker pantry cabinet, kind of in the back, because remember, this is for long-term emergency supply. I don't need to have it out very often. Now, very carefully, now this stuff is very light, so you wanna make sure you don't even breathe very hard on it. We're gonna go ahead and scoop this up. I love the way it kind of, it almost gets like uh, cottony. It's really amazing. Like, look at that. Look at how tiny this is, you guys. This is just almost nothing. Isn't it amazing? Okay, and we're gonna get that in there. I've got about three more jars or trays already done in the freeze dryer. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill this up with those two. Now, make sure you don't leave anything behind on the tray. That is valuable water right there. You guys, check that out. That is three quarters of a gallon of water. And I mean, that's less than a tablespoon. Can you imagine how much you're gonna be able to fit into this jar? That is absolutely amazing. Like, isn't that totally revolutionary? I can't believe it. Okay, let's check out how you rehydrate this when you wanna go ahead and use it. The CDC really recommends changing out your backup water supplies every six months in case the water has gone bad. You know, usually when you're storing water for a long period of time, you need to add something like bleach, something to help it not grow bacteria while it's in storage. The great thing about this is it can't grow bacteria because there's no more liquid for the bacteria to grow in. Bacteria needs moisture in order to be able to grow and this has pretty much absolutely no moisture 
whatsoever. But again, remember we wanna keep it that way while it's in storage. So I'm gonna go ahead and vacuum seal this. I'm gonna put the Food Saver lid attachment for the jar right on the top. And then I'm going to put my Food Saver right in there and push the vacuum button. Now this is pulling all of the air out right now and creating a vacuum inside there. Now of course we have that oxygen absorber in there so that's gonna help make sure that any oxygen that's left, because this is only a light vacuum that this can create, anything that's left in there is gonna be absorbed by that oxygen absorber, which is a great way to go. Okay, now we have water in a jar, condensed water in a jar. Make sure you label this. Like everything else on the homestead, labeling is so important. Put what's in it, make sure you mark that it's freeze dried, put the date on here so that when you get to that 25 year mark and you haven't had to use this yet, you'll know that it's time to go ahead and transition it out, make a fresh jar of backup water. It's always best for something like this to go ahead and write directly on the jar how to use it. Now, let's go ahead and talk about that right now. So today, I'm gonna be rehydrating about a cup of water. Now, because this is backup emergency storage, you guys, I really hope that you're never going to have to take this step, but if you do, you need to know what to do with it. So I went ahead and I did the math. Now, the way to figure out how to rehydrate anything freeze-dried is that you weigh it when it's fresh and then you weigh it after it's been freeze dried and you divide that by the amount of servings you have. It's kind of hard to work with such light amounts. You need approximately 1 32nd of a teaspoon per cup of water. So let's see what that looks like. Now, 1 32nd is a very, very small number. And remember how powdery this is. So be careful when you open it and that seal, you don't want it to poof all out of your jar. Okay, I'm gonna get in there. This is an eighth teaspoon measure, and I'm gonna get about a quarter of that in here. Okay, and just put that into whatever container it is that you want to use to rehydrate it. Now, of course, this scales up really, really nicely. You just need to know your measurements. If you want a full gallon of water, you just have to multiply that 132nd by about 16 for 16 cups in a gallon. And then you'll know what you want. Okay, now this is for one whole cup. So now you're just gonna take a cup of water and you're gonna pour it right on in over your dehydrated water. We're just gonna get that to the right consistency, which should be right at about one cup of water for that amount that we put in there. And let's go ahead and give it a good stir to make sure it's all the way rehydrated. It should be pretty instant. Okay, let's check that out. Oh my goodness. You guys, that tastes amazing. It tastes exactly like fresh water. You guys have got to give this a try. <laughs> Did I get you? Yeah, you can't rehydrate water. You'd have to use water to rehydrate water. Definitely do not try this at home. It totally works, but you still have to rehydrate it with water. But you guys, freeze drying is an amazing way to store your food for a really long period of time. So if you wanna check out some real videos on how to actually freeze dry food, and you know what, wanna know what I really think about my freeze dryers, check out this video right here. And go enjoy all the comments below because I'm sure there's some very interesting ones after that. Thank you guys, we'll see you soon, goodbye.